Good evening and welcome to the June 12th regular meeting of the East Chester Board of Fire Commissioners. We began this evening's e meeting at 6.30. Uh, it is now, immediately went into executive session. Uh, we got out just a couple of minutes ago. It's now 7.59. Uh, we're gonna begin the meeting uh, this evening with the treasurer's report uh, from our treasurer, Jamie Hedstrom. Thank you. Um, so tonight we're looking at the uh, financials as of May 31st, 2018. Um, similar to last month, we are trending just about the same, showing a surplus of approximately $275,000 uh, overall for the budget. However, uh, tonight we'll be going through the budget transfers that we've been talking about um, at the last couple of meetings. So these are line items where the line item itself is either over budget um, or is expected to be over budget as we look through our anticipated expenses through the rest of the year. Um, so the, the largest one we've talked about is related to the firefighter overtime. Um, the chief and I have been uh, conducting a very detailed analysis of what we anticipate we'll still need for the rest of the year. Um, we're not over our budget yet, but we do anticipate going over the budget. Um, as a reminder, we were budgeted for $500,000 this year. Uh, last year, our spending came in more uh, closer to $800,000 in overtime. Um, and so based on the work that we've done, we're anticipating needing 625000 this year, uh, which would be a $125,000 transfer um, at this time. Um, we, were, we'll, we would be able to just take that from the uniform firefighter salary line. So we're really just moving it, um, since we're not, we're paying it in overtime likely instead of salary, um, you know, based on some of the shortages we've had for part of the year, as well as some of the recent retirements. Um, so that's the, that's the largest item. Um, you know, the thing is, is that now that we have prepared the analysis that we have, it's, it's going to be easier to track going forward. Because um, the one thing I will say is that the analysis, we tried to take into consideration everything we could. The one thing that's just such an unknown is any long-term absences. So to the extent we have future long-term absences, those can have a material impact. Um, but at least now we'll know at the time and we'll be able to come to you with any, uh, you know, uh, changes, you know, in real time versus kind of waiting until the end of the year and just seeing what we spent. Um, other than that, there's just a few others. Uh, the uniform line, which we've talked about, um, we sort of, in the last year, year or two, we've made up for a lack of, I think, spending in this area in the past few years. Um, so we have some transfers there. Um, a transfer for our labor consultant attorney fees. Um, this is just uh, transferred to segregate work that's done by our attorneys versus work that's done by like 207A consulting firms, which we don't typically budget for specifically. Um, and then we had a recent uh, settlement related to some of our 207A payments, so we have to uh, do a transfer there as well. Um, do you want me to read through them or are you gonna read? Uh... You, I'll read through them when we uh, propose a motion to, to do them. So you can just, okay. you've already covered what we're doing there, so. Okay. Um, as far as that, the only other thing I have for tonight is that we have the PERMA renewal, which is our workers' comp carrier um, for the period starting July 1st, 2018 through June 30th of 2019. Um, we saw another nice uh, decrease in our premium this year over last year. Um, so like we're, you know, the last two years we've had a significant decrease. Um, a lot of that has to do with our experience modification factor, um, which is the number of claims that we're having. We have a very low um, factor. Um, we did not go out for bid this year. We did that last year. Um, there's only three carriers that we could choose between, and last year the others didn't even want to bid. Um, so we didn't go out this year. So we have the quote from PERMA um, for $357,858. Um, that is if we pay in full up front and take advantage of the 2% discount, which is what we have done for the last few years. So that's the other thing I have on the table for this evening. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I guess a couple of things, and then we can get into the motion for the transfers. Uh, e you know, each year we budget a certain amount of money for overtime to cover uh, firefighter shifts in, in two cases. 
Uh, one is if a firefighter calls in sick, has a short or a long-term injury, stomach flu, out for a day, uh, hurt his back out for two weeks, three weeks, a month. Uh, we also uh, budget a certain amount of overtime uh, to cover for when we're running short versus a full roster. In order to, to man uh, our typical manning in the district, we need a certain number of firefighters uh, employed full-time to do that. Occasionally, we've run short that number, so we have overtime to pay firefighters to work additional hours. Uh, the past year, uh, we've had a situation where we were running short uh, quite a few guys. Uh, we really recently hired uh, four new firefighters. Uh, we have uh, two openings currently, uh, and this has distorted the, the calculations of these numbers and what the true overtime budget should be. It's made it more difficult to track, although uh, Jamie has done a, a phenomenal job uh, doing her best to, to communicate exactly what the numbers are. I will say this, the, the department is, is uh, the board has is, is made a decision that uh, it is not cost effective to run short firefighters and pay overtime. Uh, entry level firefighters are uh, paid a, uh, a salary and benefits in the area of roughly $97,000 in their first year of service. So if we have uh, four openings, we're paying uh, overtime at the average firefighter salary times one and a half times. Uh, and that number, that all in cost is considerably higher than the cost of a first year firefighter. So the first thing I would say is that the, the, the board is, is intent on making sure that these openings are, are filled as, as promptly as, as we possibly, uh, as promptly as we possibly can. So then the issue becomes like, you know, once we're fully staffed, what is the appropriate sizing of the overtime budget? Historically, we've budgeted 500,000, but it's gone up and down, and we're always putting budget transfers in. One thing that I think is important is that next year, if we're fully staffed, we keep close track of what these sick calls are. Our department has historically had ebbs and flows on what our sick call experience has been. Uh, a lot of municipal departments will automatically shut down firehouses if you go to 7% or higher. We've approached that 7% number on occasion. And I think uh, the number has been too high, but it's been difficult to manage a little bit because of the distortions with these guys who are you know, running these position, short positions. So uh, I am gonna propose that we, we transfer this $125,000 to the overtime budget uh, to cover these costs uh, for this year. But next year, I think the board has to spend a lot of time fully considering this overtime budget and appropriately sizing it for what uh, the right experience should be of the level, the rate at which our firefighters call in sick. And if that level exceeds something that is, is unacceptable or out of whack with what's experienced by, uh, you know, fire districts of, of similar size, then the board is going to have to figure out what levers we can pull to to right the ship because it's this constant transferring of more funds into this this line item is just uh, you know I, I don't think it's an appropriate way to to handle things so uh that said uh you know i'm in favor of of moving forward with these transfers i just talked about the overtime but i, I feel equally about the other ones so uh, I'll maybe make a motion for that in, in a second. But the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, the PERMER, which is Public Employee Risk Management Association. It's a nonprofit insurance company that covers uh, workers' comp uh, in New York State. Uh, as Jamie mentioned, uh, we get a discount if we pay by July 1st. Commissioner Winter uh, made a couple of comments. He, he couldn't get to it until today, but I think they were, were good comments that uh, need to be investigated. Uh, we need to get the answers. Uh, but because of the fact that we've got to pay this bill to take advantage of the discount by July 1, uh, what I am going to uh, do is ask that the board empower me uh, to uh, get the answers to those questions uh, and then to my satisfaction, uh, sign this agreement uh, on behalf of the board. Uh, so those are the things we're going to be looking to do. If anybody want to make any additional comments? Uh, I can one comment on the overtime hiring versus overtime. I'm in the opposite camp from the majority of the board. Um, 
Yes, the initial year you hire someone, they come in around $45,000 a year, and then they work their way within five years up to the full, full salary of a full, you know, of a fireman. They go up about 20% a year until they hit the about $92,000 mark. But if you look at our audited financials this year, we were required to put in the health insurance cost for retirees uh, and accrue how much that health insurance cost would be over time. It's basically an unfunded liability of the district. Right now, that number is about $20 million for the East Chester Fire District and unfunded liability for medical insurance. So yes, you get an initial kiss, if you want to call it that, when you hire somebody versus the overtime. But long term, you can't even, when you hire somebody who's 24 years old, 25 years old, they can retire at 50. And people born you know, 25 years ago probably lived into their 90s you got 30, 40 years of health care, you're going to be paying for them under this contract. We're paying about 90% of, of their health care for life. So I think that uncertainty w argues that you're, it's cheaper for us to pay overtime to existing employees, let the existing employees make more money, and, and don't run with a full roster just know that you're going to have a larger overtime bill and a lo lo smaller salary bill on the salary line, but a bigger overtime line, because the cost down the road is, is much greater for the health care cost. That's my, my, and I know the other board members disagree with me on this, but that's my point. Uh, if I could, I, I, I think that there's, uh, there's valid points on both sides of the argument. And I see myself flip-flopping a lot about what's better, you know, how, how to go about this. But what I think that we're not taking as seriously right now, because we have the benefit of not really being in that situation right now, but we are on the edge of most likely a transition in our staffing when it comes to firefighters in this district in the next two to three years, maybe even less, where we may see uh, a for us a nominal number of firefighters moving on from being active employees of the district and the lag time as we've already witnessed between getting letters out sending people for CPAT interviewing them potentially making them first level firefighters is such a long race from start to finish that we could be running too low at some point if we don't have people filling these roles right now. I just wanted to put that out there for people to consider. I'd hate for us to run four or five short now and then run 10 short for some reason just because three years ago we wanted to save a little bit of money but now we're expending even more money in overtime because people are going for three months worth of training and we have to wait. We have three people now in, 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 in the academy who will graduate in July. It'd be nice potentially to think that we have other people in the pipeline. Just another aspect. If you go I, back I, I hear and, both sides. If you go back and look at the history of the hiring is what basically is what, how people exit the fire services basically in the groups they were hired in. So, or, or they age out similarly to how they were hired. And the fire department has a pretty smooth, this district has a pretty smooth hiring process over the last, call it, 30 years, where you see they hired two or three or four at one time. I don't think there's ever been a class pulse back there, but of 10 people going to the fire academy or more than probably four going to the fire academy, I think the average is three to go to the fire academy once every couple of years. If you look over the last four years, we had two groups of, I think, three or four go to the fire academy. Uh, it's on that sheet that I passed around before the budget's on it, but yeah, we, we don't have, we have an older population of firefighters, but that doesn't mean that they're all going to retire at the same time. New York State changed its retirement age from 62 to 65 about four years ago, which allows us to have some of the more senior people here who are, uh, who, who do an excellent job, some who never miss a day, um, stay on the ranks. And so that's what we have. And that is a benefit. I think that what you said is very important, that there are monetary considerations to make, and one can be cheaper than the other in the long term. But, but the East Chester Fire Department isn't really here. We, yes, we want to be very frugal with our money. We don't want to waste it for sure. But, but the whole purpose is the safety of life. 
and property. And, and that's what we have to be concerned about. And, and what I don't want to see, and you're right, we're not, this is not an immediate danger. We can see this uh, 10 years down the line, it'll increase as we have more men in 50s than we do in the 60s. Uh, but we also don't, and, and fortunately we don't have 10 guys coming in at once. We have them coming two or three times because you want junior men to be working with senior men. We want it to be done gradually so that we're training the men and we're making sure they know the job and that they're safe as they're doing the job and therefore the citizens are safe. And so for the little bit amount of money that we can save by doing overtime, and believe me, I'm going to tell the public right now, I saw the numbers, there is not a tremendous amount of overtime for the East Chester Fire Department. It is very minimal, actually. Uh, yes, it, it, it's enough that we have to change $125,000 from firefighter salary into overtime salary, but I don't want to give the misrepresentation that these people are doubling their salary. Firefighters are making 50, 100 hours of overtime a year. It, it, it's really negligible. So I think the public should know that if they're viewing this. And we want to bring in firefighters, n not all at once, but piecemeal, a right. couple at a time, you know, once or twice a year, send them to the academy, train them, get them into the firehouse, make sure they're acclimated, they know their job, and then in, in five or six years, they'll be training the new guys. And, yeah. and we want to do it gradually, and we don't ever want to see a, a case where we're putting 10 men in the academy, yeah, the or need to. The average overtime in 2017 for a fireman in East Chester, I think, is $9,100. Chief, if I can put you on the spot for a second, and sure. it is public <coughs> record, but it doesn't mean you have to be held to it. Do you have an idea of a number in your head about what we could be looking at over the next three years as far as how many positions, if we weren't to fill any, and we decided, let's say, four years from now to hire firemen, what, how many positions do you think would be empty by that point? It would be a guess. But yep, 100% guess, not held to it. Four years, maybe 20. Okay. I would think. Yeah. It's, all all, all the more reason. At the end of the contract, it could be an incentive to retire, you know, okay. that uncertainty, so. I All right. Consider well, that. Yeah. Thanks for the candor. I appreciate it. So, as far as Dennis's uh, claims on the numbers, just a couple of things. You know, there are some numbers that are known. Uh, we know what we pay a probationary firefighter. We know what the average salary is of our existing firefighters. So, what we end up paying in overtime. The spread between the all-in cost uh, of a probationary firefighter and the average salary times 1.5, which is what it's costing us to fill that, that role with overtime, it's a big spread. It's immense. And, you know, Dennis is talking about these future liabilities, and maybe at some point you cross over, there's so many assumptions that are being made on what contributions are going to be to health care at that time, what health care costs are going to be, uh, longevity of, of the firefighters, that it's, it's you know, I don't know, I'd like to, he made a claim, I'd love to, to see some hard numbers to, to support his claim. What I could tell you is that, what, what I could tell you, what I could tell you is that, so you're going to show me a number that's spread out over, you know, 70 guys, and what I'm telling you is right now, we're talking about thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 difference, you know, on an entry-level firefighter versus what we're paying somebody a time and a half. It's material. So I don't, I don't, uh, I think your numbers have too many assumptions and too many hopes and wannabes. And uh, I just, and, and then for the other reasons that have been mentioned tonight is that if we really have a, 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 a force that's, that's senior in age and we think that there is a possibility of that many vacancies, we definitely want to be ahead of the curve. We don't want to be four, five, six guys down and then have a situation where the contract expires next year and all of a sudden 10 guys say, you know what, time for Florida, and then we're scrambling to integrate what could be 10 guys, 15 guys into a force of 70. That's too big a percentage. doesn't make sense. So anyway, uh, is it, does anybody have any other comments or do we want to just, uh, I, I can make these motions. Uh, so the first motion is going to be to accept uh, the transfers uh, as proposed by our treasurer uh, to the overtime firefighters from uniform firefighter salary of $125,000 uh, to uniforms from certiorari of $28,000 to labor consultants attorney fees from professional consultant fees $4,000 from disabled fireman salary 207As from professional consultant fees, $40,115.31 for a total of 197 dollars 31 I made the motion. Does anyone want to second it? 
I'll second it. Okay. And I will poll the board. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Lori. Aye. I am an I. Commissioner Winter. Aye. Okay. And Commissioner Roach. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, Jamie, thanks for your work on, on the stuff, on the overtime and everything else. Really stellar job. Appreciate and one, it. One thing we can consider is, because we're going to start looking at the budget, you know, any, any day now for next year, is, you know, we could start budgeting by title if we think that would be helpful because we could, you know, now we just lump it all together, but we could budget, you know, captain versus lieutenant versus firefighter because sometimes the numbers you can't really get a good feel when it's all lumped in. I mean, we get the payroll data that way, so it's not that difficult to do, and maybe it's a better tracking mechanism going forward, especially, you know, now that we're, you know, because that had a lot of impact when you're looking at an $800,000 budget, you know, that we spent $800,000 last year. You know, you also have to be considering, well, we were short, you know, a captain for a period of time, and that has a maybe a bigger impact than other things. So it might be worthwhile to break that out in our budget for next year um, so it's a little bit easier to track. I think okay. that's right, because the captains, I think the average captain's overtime last year was about $36,000. Right. The average overtime for a lieutenant I think was about 22 yeah and the average overtime for a fireman I think was about 9.1 9, 9, 9 9,100 right so if you're dealing with a long-term injury that's in the lieutenant spot it's going to have a different impact than if it's in firefighter or captain so maybe we can look at it that way it'll make it a little easier for next year yeah it works thank you, Jamie. okay great thank you uh, the next issue I would make a motion to uh, for the board like I said to empower me to uh, renew our perma renewal uh, subject to satisfactory uh, receipt of, of certain questions that Commissioner Winter raised and also trying to negotiate a broker's fee a little bit lower. So uh, the, uh, the renewal price would be no greater than 357,858. Uh, I'll make that motion. Will someone second it? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, and I will poll the board. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Laurie? Aye. I am an aye. Commissioner Winter? No. Okay. And Commissioner Roach? Aye. All right. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, payment of bills. Uh, the board has reviewed the bills and warrants and makes a motion to pay them. There are three sets of warrants. Uh, one set of warrants dated 5-22-18, totaling $212,733.40. A second set of warrants dated uh, June 7, 2018, totaling $40,115.31. And a third set of warrants dated 6-12-18, totaling $168,402.38. A credit card bill dated 6-18-18 in the amount of $660.56. For a total of 421 uh, I'm going to pull the board in a second on this. Uh, I just want to be clear that uh, usually we review these bills in executive session. The last two executive sessions, we've had a very full agenda, and I've been focused kind of on running uh, the executive session, so I didn't review the bills. I'm going to abstain again tonight. The rest of the board did. Uh, next month, I hope to get to the uh, fire district office before the meeting and do it just so that uh, we don't have that issue again. So anyway, someone want to make the motion? I'll make a motion. I only have one comment. The, um, there's a lot of bills in there for, like, maintenance items, and the maintenance worker or maintenance personnel has been extremely busy based on those bills, and he's doing a phenomenal job. I mean, he's got, he's got things going on. So yeah, I'd make that motion. And, 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 and very frugally. I yes. mean, those bills aren't large. He's no, doing he's, lots of things, but not he's spending fixing lots a lot of, of money. Things. Excellent. Who's uh, seconding it? This is important. <laughs> Somebody second? Yeah. I'll second. All right. Well, Tom, and I'll pull the board. Uh, Commissioner Rabin? Aye. Commissioner Laurie? Aye. Um, abstaining. Commissioner Winter? Yes. And Commissioner Roach? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next up, Chief Tween's monthly report. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> the monthly alarm activity for May was 326 alarms. Five were fire-related, 177 EMS or rescue-related, and three times mutual aid was given, twice to Mount Vernon and once to Pelham Manor Fire Department. 
Uh, May was a busy month for me for special details. I represented the district on May 12th uh, at both the Tuckahoe and Eastchester Police Department Police Remembrance Ceremonies and also their award ceremonies. Both, both services were extremely well done. Uh, thank you to both organizations for the invitation. On Sunday, May 27th, the Eastchester and Tuckahoe Veterans Organization held their Memorial Day ceremony at Eastchester High School. They focused on the 100th anniversary of the ending of World War I, paying tribute to several local veterans uh, of that war. Um, and they also paid tribute to veterans of all the wars. Uh, the next day on Monday, May 28th, I marched in the Bronxville Memorial Day Parade. Uh, thank you to Chief Satriali and the Bronxville Police for allowing me to march with their organization. Um, and the fire district was invited to lay a wreath at the service in front of the Bronxville High School uh, flagpole. Uh, Commissioner Winter was also in attendance, and as was Commissioner Lori. Uh, we're both at the Bronxville Parade. Uh, the vehicle maintenance continues through our use of our outside vendor. Uh, the three surplus vehicles we talked about last month will be going on the AAR auction website tomorrow or the next day. Uh, we just need to review the way it's set up. I sent a link to each of the commissioners, uh, the treasurer and the secretary, for any comments. Uh, if we don't find any uh, changes, uh, it'll go on the auction site. The auction will last approximately 10 to 14 days, and the auction's website cut is 10% of the sale price. Uh, the three vehicles we're surplusing are a 1979 GMC pickup truck, a 2000 Ford Crown Victoria four-door sedan, and a 2001 Chevy Suburban. Uh, maintenance mechanic Tim Dalton has been very busy, as commissioners have noticed, uh, doing the regular maintenance of the firehouses, but also preparing Station 4 for the exterior construction project. He removed the two overgrown bushes, uh, one on each side of the overhead door in the front. He's also removed a vent pipe uh, that was for a gasoline leak that was back in the 80s. We contacted the DEC through our fire prevention department. They said that needed to be uh, running for three years. If there was no more readings in the basement after the three-year period, we no longer had to maintain that. It had been unplugged for at least 10 years, judging by the corrosion on the plugs for those uh, vent pumps. Um, so uh, they were no longer being used. We removed the pipe on the ex external of the building uh, so the uh, work can be done on the brickwork. Uh, so Tim has been busy down there. He's also uh, been loosening up the phone wires and uh, removed wires that are no longer needed uh, so that the uh, masons can work on the uh, brick pointing. Um, the Tucko Hose Tower roofing project went very smoothly. Uh, the uh, roof project has been completed and all the copper roofing that they removed, Tim scrapped at the local scrap yard. We gave money to Jamie which she loves getting cash and having to run to the bank. Uh, so that was, uh, we did get the copper scrap and uh, that was taken care of. So that project is done. Uh, fire prevention and code enforcement with Captain Pinneval continues with numerous plan reviews and inspections. On Saturday, May 19th, the Eastchester Safety Day was rained out and Eastchester rescheduled it for Saturday, June 2nd. Uh, Captain Pinneval was there with one of the firefighters with his smoke trailer. Uh, demonstrating safety things to do uh, when a smoke alarm goes off. Uh, Captain Calby completed the training for our uh, new uh, uh, prescriptions, as you may say, uh, our new uh, protocols for <laughs> albuterol. Um, so now all the vehicles uh, that respond to calls have albuterol, a uh, minimum of Narcan. The ladder trucks only have Narcan. The engines in the captain's car, which go on medical calls, have the albuterol for asthma patients and epinephrine for allergic reactions. Um, so the Narcan is on every apparatus, and those other ones are in the vehicles that respond to EMS calls. Um, I received a letter from the neighbor of the Bronxville Firehouse um, that the retaining wall is in uh, dire need of repair. Um, he did mention that his snowplow operator damaged about a six-foot section of the wall, um, and he suggested we contact them for uh, reimbursement uh, for the damage, but also the length of the wall along our properties. His house is uh, near the front, and the back of the yard is by the cemetery. So that, all that property on his side is owned by a church in Staten Island, um, and so he would like us to repair the wall. Um, so I suggested that we possibly try to find a, um, a uh, survey uh, which shows just so it's our wall so we don't repair it if it turns out to be his. I did find a survey. I sent a copy 
with my minutes to the commissioners. We can review it and see if we determine it kind of goes like some of ours part of, you know, so uh, there may be some dispute as to who owns the wall. He says his grandfather lived in the house since he was a little kid and that the wall was put in when they built the firehouse in 1947. So the whole purpose was that we built the wall because we wanted to level the property. So that may or may not be true. I'm trying to do more research on it and then we'll make a determination. Tim said if he's gonna be the one to fix the wall, you won't see him for the rest of the summer because it's 200 feet going this way and 100 feet going that way. And much of the wall needs uh, maintenance or uh, severe repair. Um, so I think we would hire a company to do that. So I'll look into that. I'll make a report to the commissioners on that. Um, so that's the end of my report. Chief. Yes, sir. On the hose tower. Yes, sir. And the, all the tree branches that they um, had to cut, they're all piled up back there. Is the town going to take them or the village going to take them? So Tim actually went there because a lot of those tree branches were also going on to the back of the firehouse right. roof, not the roof that was repaired, the lower right. roof. Right. Um, I know that. And it was clogging our gutter. So Tim went up there with a chainsaw and trimmed after he talked to the highway department. They're going to come on uh, whatever day they do tree branches and grass clippings. They're going to come and remove all the stuff that Tim has trimmed away from our roof. So the East the Chester, East Chester okay. no, East Chester is going to come. It's okay. the, that right. plot of land is actually East Chester, yes, even yes. though it's in the village. I'm aware of that. If so they're going to take tomorrow. care of that. Probably tomorrow, I think. Yeah, Wednesday. that sounds about right. Chief, the CG Law Conference, was that this month or last month? Did we do that between this meeting and that level? I believe that was May, right? Do you remember the, uh, the one in Long Island, the Coglin Gerhardt? We haven't discussed that yet, right? Here? No. No. So was that Chief June or May? It was in May. Right? Okay. Yeah, after the May meeting, right? Yeah, so we, we uh, the chief and I, Lisa and Jamie, attended a conference put on by our law firm, and uh, they do this annual conference to update us, and mostly it was on 207A claims and new topics in the law. And one of the topics that is um, yet to be hashed out as far as hashed out might be not be the right term, uh, was medical marijuana. Um, I didn't mean to pun on words there, but the um, New York State has passed a, medical, uh, a kind of broad medical marijuana law, which is going to could at some point in time be a problem for employers in New York State of how they deal with people on mer medical marijuana because they broadened who can get medical marijuana in a pretty wide way. Um, the other thing New York State passed a law on, and it's also a civil right that you can take it because it falls under the civil. It was a civil rights deal that you you can't give somebody a hard time if they're taking it. And the other one was is a sex, New York State changed a sexual harassment uh, training deal where employers, municipal employees and private employers, are going to have to have anti-sexual harassment policies, right? And then they have to have these policies in place and train their personnel and all the vendors that work for them also going to have to certify that their employees, if they come into their property, have been certified or trained in that. So if you bring in a person who is a repairing your copying machine before they come in, you're going to have to get certification that that person has been trained or received training in, in sexual harassment. So it is a, it's going to be, and the onus is on the employer to make sure that any whoever steps foot on their property has had the training before they step foot on their property and we're going to need new policies in place i think the law comes into effect in october so this is something in the horizon that we're going to have to deal with is either refresher courses for all our employees on sexual harassment and anybody like the mechanic an outside vendor mechanic who comes in is going to have to certify that he has his employees have had it so it's uh, yeah it's it's um it was kind of an enlightening um conference well we have have we addressed that with our new contractor for the chester heights uh, firehouse well no we're going to need to though at some point because that's going to take place after october yeah so okay well we'll, and then we'll do it when it, be, when it becomes a law anyway. i'm sure we'll we'll do it uh i just want to comment on one thing uh i'm in the chief tween's report uh <coughs> last week we had a discussion on that roof repair uh at the hose tower at our Tuckahoe station. Uh, we had a bit of a dilemma in that uh, we had four bids and one was uh, conspicuously lower than the other three. Uh, and the board uh, was looking to move forward with a 
a higher bid. Uh, it turns out that after uh, consideration, further consideration, that low bidder, I believe, realized that uh, his bid was, was too low to complete the job, and he withdrew his bid. Uh, and we ultimately awarded the job to uh, Salvatore Roofing, who's since completed it. This is the second roof job he's done for us in the past year. Did a great job. We're happy with that. So uh, just wanted to update everyone on that. Uh, next, we're going to uh, look to approve the minutes. Secretary Gutierrez has prepared the minutes for board meetings held on the following dates. Uh, Jan 11th regular board meeting attended by Inkladon, Winter, Lori, Rabin, and Roach. January 11th, 2018 award ceremony attended by Inkladon, Winter, Lori, Rabin, and Roach. April 10th regular meeting attended by Inkladon, Winter, Lori, Rabin, and Roach. Why don't we stop there because we got everybody. Okay. Uh, the April 18th meeting uh, was a special meeting just attended by Inkladon, Lori, and Roach. And the May 8th, uh, 2018 meeting, include on Laurie, Roach, Winter, and Rabin. Uh, Commissioner uh, Winter uh, uh, requested some changes uh, to, uh, to the minutes. Uh, I was fine with all of them except uh, for one on the April uh, 10th meeting, I believe it was. Uh, I'll poll the board right now on the approval of the minutes. Uh, they're all grouped together. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the minutes first provided off? Provided we insert my changes. And I'll, right. I'll abstain from the one um, meeting I didn't attend. Which, which meeting was that? I, I was, uh, I know I didn't attend one of them. It was a we special meeting. The special meeting. What was, what was the meeting where Dennis uh, wanted the letter included, the letter? Oh, that, that was a was January, January meeting, January 11th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, both Dennis and I were absent for that 18th meeting, so he and I would so you could just group the three together right. so, with changes. Uh, let's go with a motion to accept the May 8th regular meeting attended by all of us. With the with the. Uh, I'll make it with with, with, changes. with changes as yeah. Uh, I would second that. All right. So, poll the board. Uh, aye. Commissioner Raven, Commissioner Laurie. Aye. I'm an aye. aye. Uh, I, okay, carries. April 18, 2018, special meeting, uh, just Inklet on Laurie and Roach. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, I'll pull. Commissioner Laurie. Aye. I say aye. Commissioner Roach. Aye. Okay, Abstain. accepted. Uh, right, well, yes, yeah, sorry. You two guys no weren't there. Uh, April 10, 2018, regular meeting, attended by all of us. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, pull the board. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Lori. Aye. I'm an aye. Commissioner Winter and aye. Commissioner Roach. Okay. January 11th, 2018, award ceremony attended by all. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Excuse me. I'm sorry. Aye. Lori. Aye. aye. I'm an aye. Commissioner Winter and Commissioner Roach. Aye. Okay. Uh, January 11th, 2018, regular board meeting attended by all of us. Does someone want to make that motion? I'll make a motion with changes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Rabin and Lori seconds, and I'll pull the board. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Lori. Aye. I'm a no. Commissioner Winter. Aye. And Commissioner Roach. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. All those minutes are accepted. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's talk about uh, Chester Heights renovation. Uh, apparently there's been uh, some back and forth with the town, uh, the buildings department on uh, the scaffolding plans. Uh, before work can begin on our Chester Heights firehouse, uh, we have to erect scaffolding, uh, both for protection and for access reasons. Uh, the town has requested some additional information. Uh, the contractor is providing it. We were hoping we would have, be, we would have started already. Uh, we're hopeful that now that these changes have been submitted and will be accepted promptly and that we can start uh, towards the end of this week. Uh, but that's where, where that uh, project stands. Uh, the board has mentioned uh, previously that we're considering uh, asking for proposals for what we'll define as phase three of Chester Heights, all of the work that we've either done or are contemplating in this 
current uh, renovation or to the exterior of the building. Uh, the building needs tremendous work on the inside as well. Uh, I am uh, very happy with the architect, uh, the A&E firm that we've chosen to to work with us uh, on on that firehouse so far, uh, and uh, we intend to get a proposal from from uh, that firm for the interior work. Uh, other commissioners or uh, Commissioner Winter had mentioned that he wanted to bring somebody else into the MISCs, so I guess I would ask him if he could update us on that when I'm done. Uh, but the, the question that is kind of open uh, for consideration is, is what's going to be part of that project uh, and what we asked them to actually submit a proposal for. And what we've come up with, and I'm going to throw out now and, and open it up to board uh, discussion, but uh, floor slab replacement uh, interior uh, modifications uh, including uh, kitchens bathrooms bunk room uh, new entry addition with elevator that's to make the building ADA compliant uh, new HVAC a system uh, HVAC system interior lighting and electrical upgrades uh, interior panel uh, oh, excuse me interior painting and finish including lead paint abatement uh, cellar waterproofing and painting sump pump replacement humidity control system uh, second floor painting and refurbishment, and IT support uh, for recording of our meetings. Uh, if we move forward uh, with this work, which I believe we ultimately will, uh, it is a, uh, a perfect space on the second floor to conduct our, our meetings. Uh, so we want to make sure we have the capabilities to, to do that. Uh, is everyone kind of on board with that? Uh, yeah, and broad strokes. <coughs> I, I have uh, an addition to that. Uh, at the uh, safety meeting, we did say that under any renovations that we would put a laundry room or, or in any adequate space or bathroom that we'd add a wash and dryer for personal use for the gear and uh, personal clothing of the firefighters. Yeah, so. my recollection of that meeting was a little different. I think uh, I I believe that we need to have a commercial washer and dryer available in case there's any contamination or someone, you know, uh, but uh, we had issues in the past uh, with washers and dryers being, you know, firemen bringing their laundry in and doing yeah, their personal laundry. Yeah, that was a one, one time uh, situation that was corrected uh, immediately. I, I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think Well, we said that we were going to do it. I, I think we should stand by what we I, said. I don't, Tom, my recollection was, was that we said that we would make available a commercial washer and dryer for those types of things. I don't think... Uh, we have time to discuss Yeah, we, we have time to discuss it, so... And then the other thing that we have to add to that is that we have to provide a, a barrier wall on the apparatus floor so that we have secondary egress from the top floor. In other words, they come down those side stairs and they have to go across and out the side You're going to have to go straight out the door. You're not going to be able to come up to the apparatus floor. Right. So we need to uh, provide a barrier wall on the apparatus floor. The uh, part of the plan is, you know, when I mentioned all this, I mentioned the elevator. <coughs> the building is going to be ADA compliant. That is what we're uh, going to accomplish as part of this renovation. That would be required. To make the building ADA compliant, so that is that is part of what we're talking about. Fire code requirement to have that not to go outside, but if you look at the lockers we put in uh, upstairs in Station One, and I think they're upstairs in Station One, and in the and in Station Five, the gear lockers they're actually quite nice. Um, the way they're the gear in Station Five particularly, I think you want to make a have an area where you could hang have gear lockers put in that are like that, and they can't have fluorescent lights. You need to have uh, different lighting because the, the- On the apparatus floor? On the apparatus floor, yeah. You want to put in, you find, well, you want to find a spot where you can put in gear lockers. And I think having a, the, it's unfortunate the washing machine is on the second floor of the, of the second, but that's the room we had at the time. Um, but it would be nice if you could have a washer, or just a regular old clothes washer and dryer on the first floor, and if it gets abused, it's up to the chief or the captain to, uh, to monitor it. But, um, but a, a thousand dollar washer dryer on the floor, you go to a car scene, you get blood on you, you don't need to track that home. You have to have a washing machine in the house to take care of it. Agreed. Okay. All right. All right. We'll All right. So we're gonna ask for that proposal. And Commissioner Winter, you plan on bringing another engineering firm into the mix here? No, haven't looked. Uh, 
you're this satisfied is, with the current uh, firm or you're? No, I just, I can count. So I'm fine with what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I mentioned uh, next, uh, we uh, intend to fill uh, two vacant uh, probationary firefighter positions that we have uh, in anticipation of hiring uh, these two firefighters. Uh, we recently uh, canvassed uh, uh, applicants who took the civil service test, uh, Westchester County civil service test, who are Eastchester residents who scored 95s. Uh, basically, a canvas is a letter stating that, you know, the board is considering hiring and uh, finding out uh, the level of interest, the number of those candidates that are still interested in the position uh, that's being offered. Uh, we had in the mid 30s uh, of applicants who scored 95s in the town initially, test was four years ago, we actually had 24 uh, reply that they still have interest in the position, which I thought was, uh, was a little bit higher than I was anticipating, uh, but it uh, speaks, I guess, to, uh, you know, uh, how desirable the, the position and a role with the, the East Chester Fire District is. Uh, the board has, uh, we, we've got two slots and, uh, you know, civil service hiring requirements are a little bit complex and I'm not going to get into the details of them, uh, but we have to interview people who scored hundreds uh, first in certain proportions for each, each open slot we have. And so uh, we have a lot more applicants in the uh, 95 category uh, then we're going to be capable of hiring uh, and that we're going to be capable of interviewing even uh, if given the limited number of spots. The board has made a decision uh, to request additional information, a resume from these applicants uh, that uh, will be reviewed by uh, Chief Tween and Chief Tween will then make a decision on not to hire anyone but who uh, we want to sponsor to take the physical fitness test to become a fire, firefighter. It's a prerequisite of the job. Uh, so that is our game plan. We'll be sending out those letters shortly. We're going to uh, ask that they be returned by the 20th. They'll be reviewed, and then we'll pick uh, from that group a limited number uh, of applicants to sponsor for the CPAT, and then we'll see what happens when uh, it comes time to hire in uh, August. And uh, if I could add one thing, I think that we agreed that, or well, maybe I suggested it might not have been agreed, but a cover letter with this, you know, why they believe they would be capable of doing the job and want the job or benefit the citizens of East Chester. Because we, they're younger men, the resumes aren't going to say that much, so if we have a written Women. word, or woman, sorry, yes, thank you. You know what I mean? So rather than just ask for just a plain cover letter, I mean a, a resume, a cover letter, a resume, so we learn more about them. We need to extract as much information as we can, I believe. Okay. You'll be reading. <laughs> you can read them. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, changes, uh, discussion of our code of ethics. No, no, uh, I don't believe we finished. Uh, the whole part about the uh, sending out the letter and canvassing and, and how they're going to be addressed and how we're going to make this decision, Th this is huge. We, ha we have to continue this. I thought I did. I mean, uh, well, well, you did, but you didn't. You, you didn't mention how that the chief's going to review them. I did. Yeah, I did. did you? Okay, I did. my apologies. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. The ball's in the well, chief's court for the first round. <laughs> yeah. right, All right. Uh, moving on. So, discussion of the ethics panel and changes to the code of ethics. Uh, the board asked our attorneys to review our code of ethics and compare it to the New York State model code uh, for fire districts. We asked them to identify provisions of the model code which we could adopt to strengthen our own code. They have done so. The board has reviewed their recommendations and would like to adopt them. The biggest change had to do with the definition of family member, which was expanded to include a larger list of relatives. Uh, I would also add that our attorney didn't only review the model code, they also reviewed the model local government code, 
uh, and the model fire district code and concluded that the fire district code was still best and most appropriate for our district. So uh, I would like to uh, make a motion. We do not have to read this code of ethics. Uh, like I said, m most of these changes were relatively minor, uh, but we did, as I said, expand the definition of family members uh, somewhat significantly from what our existing code had. Uh, and we are gonna make one addition that is not in the, uh, uh, in the draft that we're looking to adopt. And this is basically a, uh, a nepotism uh, clause uh, suggested by Commissioner Winter that uh, the board agrees it would be uh, useful to have in our code. And uh, the clause basically reads, no fire district officer or employee, either individually or as a member of the board, may participate in any decision specifically to appoint, hire, promote, discipline, or discharge a family member for any position at, for, or within the fire district or board. So I would make a motion uh, that we uh, adopt that code. Uh, and do I have a, 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 well, first, I guess we'll open to comments. Does anybody want to comment on this? No, I think the board's doing what it's supposed to do. We had a discussion last month. Uh, it was, we came to the conclusion the code of ethics wasn't uh, serving the district well with its narrow definition of family, and we're modifying it to meet the, the definition that was more broad and uh, adopting one line from the New York State Model Code of Ethics that was um, that basically broadened the family issue. So I think that the board's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and it's good we uh, brought it up and put it to bed quickly. Okay. Can I make a motion to adopt it. All right, I'll second it. So I'll poll the board. Uh, Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Lori. Aye. I am an aye. Commissioner Winter. Aye. And aye. Commissioner Roach. Okay, motion carries. So this segues into a conversation about uh, something that's included in our code of ethics. Uh, it was included in our last code of ethics and it's included in the, uh, the new version we just adopted. And this has to do with a provision uh, to create a board of ethics. Uh, this board of ethics shall render advisory opinions to officers, employees, and fire department members with respect to Article 18 of Ge General Municipal Law and this code of ethics. Such advisory opinions must be rendered pursuant to the written request of any such officer, employee, or fire department member under such rules and regulations as the Board of Ethics may prescribe. Our, core, our code calls for one of the three members of the uh, Board of Ethics to be an officer, employee, or fire department member. I believe we should move forward with appointing that person tonight so they can spearhead the process of filling out the balance of the board. I believe the best person to take on that role is the person who serves as deputy chairman. Uh, someone who's serving as deputy chairman is usually uh, fully involved in everything that the chairman is involved in, in the broadest sense of everything that's going on uh, in the fire district so that he can step in if the chairman can't be here. But because I'm usually here, uh, you know, uh, he doesn't have to step in. But he has <laughs> broad that. knowledge and, and uh, of what's going on. So, uh, you know, as an additional plus, I think it should be the person who serves as deputy chairman, but it just so happens that I think our deputy chairman would be perfect in this role given the quality of his character. Uh, so I am uh, nominating, or I will nominate shortly, Stu, uh, to serve on that board of ethics. Uh, the game plan would be that then we would fill out the board uh, with two members of the community, uh, hopefully people who have uh, backgrounds, uh, potentially legal backgrounds uh, in ethical matters. Uh, we will uh, make an ethics council uh, available to this board of ethics to advise them uh, both on uh, you know, how to best to fill it out but as I mentioned earlier, uh, under such rules and regulations of the bo as the Board of Ethics may prescribe. So they're gonna have to come up with their rules and regulations for uh, how matters are handled, how it's accessed, how the opinions are, are rendered, this kind of thing. Uh, you know, we've had this in our code since I've been on the board. Uh, we haven't had a Board of Ethics since I've been on the board, even though it's been in our code of ethics. 
Uh, Dennis has been here the longest. He may be able to shed some light of whether or not we ever had a, board, a, a panel of the Board of Ethics. I don't think we, we have. We've had a formal complaint. When we've had formal complaints in the past, we've hired outside attorneys to, uh, to process those complaints. It'll be interesting to see if we can get two people who volunteer for the Board of Ethics. I would hope that in a community uh, such as ours, there's, uh, like I've said before, I think there's a lot of uh, very, uh, you know, bright people out there who have the right experience, who are looking for a, a way to, uh, to do uh, some important community service, and, and I'm hopeful that uh, we'll get a good number of people who are interested in, in filling out the board, but I guess we'll, we'll find out. Uh, does anybody want to comment? Uh, no, I, I just want to say that I think that it's important, like you were alluding to, that this is, this is a motion and, a, and a, uh, a step forward towards the position itself being the representation for this board on the panel. It's not a, uh, specifically a motion and a second or a potential vote in order to put me on the panel in other, any other capacity. If for any reason whatsoever, just by time or by just vote next year, I am not deputy chairman. The person who is deputy chairman would then take over this role at that point in time. So as much as it may seem like it's a vote for me, it's actually a vote just for the position, which is why I think it's appropriate that I abstain from the vote because I'm sitting in the position now before it's created. And then it should be up to the board if they wish to pursue with this seat sitting on this panel. So just as a preemptive thing, I will abstain. Okay, so with that I would, uh make a motion to appoint our deputy chairman, uh, Commissioner Stuart Rabin, uh, to our Board of Ethics. Uh, and he will do what I just described uh, a couple of minutes ago. So I'm, I'm happy to make that motion. Second. Okay. And uh, I will poll the board. Commissioner Laurie. Aye. I am an aye. Commissioner Winter. No. Commissioner Roach. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. All right, that kind of wraps up what I had uh, on the agenda for this evening. So with that, I guess I'll open it up to uh, anyone from the public want to speak? 916. Okay, uh, board member comments? I, I got some requests, yet. Could, could I ask a question first? Uh, yeah. how, are we, how are we gonna recruit the two other members for the Board of Ethics? Uh, I think we're going to uh, we're going to let Stu uh, work on and perhaps, you know, uh, engage in ethics yeah. council, find out what might be the best way to, you know, community outreach. I mean, certainly I can imagine we're going to talk about it in our one of our meetings. Uh, I think we might want to post it on our website. I think we might want to contact the local newspapers. Perfect. Right. And, so we're going to make so, it public. Oh, we're, well, yeah, we're going to make a, an effort to, to find good people to, uh, to, to do this the right way. But we can't engage Ethics Council until the board approves Ethics Council. Why can't, the, why can't we engage Ethics Council? We can, but the board has to vote to do that. A single commissioner can't right. go out and, and engage. No, that's, no, of course not. Yeah, that's, no, that's I true. I, I didn't, I, I, yes. But try and do that. Commissioner Rabin is going to start the groundwork of he's already contacted a couple of people he's probably going to contact a couple more he's going to come back to the board i presumably at our next meeting and say listen this is where i am on this this is what i'd like to do and then we'll we'll proceed from that and, and i mean every member has to be vetted by the board it isn't a a uh yeah, the board votes for the members. This yeah, is, even this though Commissioner Rabin serves on the Board of Ethics, the board is ultimately deciding. Oh, well, no, I'm not worried about yeah. that. What I'm worried about is how are we going to inform the public that yeah. they are capable of coming in and sharing their interest in this board, if so. You know, like, like we make public notices of this meeting. Well, like we should certainly make a public put it through our email system with the public notice system to put that as a separate email that says we're now accepting resumes from people who are interested in joining that board. I mean, that email address uh, alias list has to have, well, have several hundred people to attach to it. Can we right? put it up on the uh, town's list? I'm sure, absolutely. And, and, and the journal, right? Uh, our paper I think all the villages the should have the opportunity to put it on their individual websites. I mean, they're all part of us, so absolutely. And it may be good to have you know the mayors and the villages and the boards and the town boards and everybody submit 
the uh, notice to anyone they know who they think may be interested in checking it out and having them contact us. And I, if to be to completely transparent as possible, I'm completely fine with the contact email being the commissioner um, email. And just if everybody wants to feel comfortable about that, I think that's more than, I'm more than happy to have that be that transparent that if they want that to be the receipt email so that anybody who sends in, just like we do for another job posting, they can all go to that. That's fair. Uh, that email account. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. And uh, Anthony? Yeah, I just want to get some of, on a few of these things that I wrote written down, uh, the approval of the board. I already spoke to the chief on it. On the 14th of um, June is Flag Day, and we're requesting an engine to be at the American Legion uh, between 5.30 and, and quarter to 6, because the American Legion is burning the flags in a ceremony and just for safety purposes to have an engine there. And when it's over, they're going to have a barbecue, and the whole board is invited to the barbecue. Uh, that's one request. Um, and we would like to have a piece of apparatus for July 2nd to the Mamaronic uh, Day Parade, and would also would like to know if we could have the maintenance truck also come be used. Also, um, Mrs. Spadaro contacted me, and she received a little pine tree from the cemetery, and she would like to know if she could place it somewhere on one of the firehouses in memory of her husband. I know I checked with Jamie. We had some money that was donated in his honor, and um, I spoke to the chief if the board uh, gives its uh, blessing on it. We could get a little plaque from the time he worked with us, from the time of his birth to the time of his death, and place it next to the, uh, the little tree wherever we plant it. The chief suggested maybe at the Bronxville Firehouse. Uh, and that's about it. And the only other thing that I have to say is that uh, tomorrow is St. Anthony's Day. Anyone with the Beautiful name of Anthony. I wish you happy St. Anthony's Day. <laughs> <laughs> happy St. Anthony's Day to you. Okay. And, that, and that's, um, all, that's all I have. Very good. Well, well, we're going to vote on your uh, suggestions? That's up to the board. If they approve it, we, we can. Uh, I, I will uh, nominate that we uh, vote on your uh, suggestions. Okay. Thank you. If anyone will second um, I don't know. With, fine with the tree. Uh, that was the, the main suggestion, so, right? And the approval of the apparatus for the American Legion on um, the 14th? Oh, I'm sorry. I was I spaced. I think, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any problem with the American Legion. Got that chief will just do that automatically. Yeah, we had it. I think we had it last, we had it last going year. out of district is more the issue. That we, also had a, we also had a piece of apparatus go out of the district last year with the maintenance uh, vehicle. Right, we did do that. We went to Mamaronek. I personally drove the maintenance vehicle. It's not a spare? We, we don't use the spare? No, la last, year, last year we had Bronxville Engine uh, attend the parade. As soon as the past the reviewing stand, he headed back home. Why? Why? I mean, to me, why? Why are we doing this? Why what? Why are we sending a, volu why are we sending a career fireman to Mamaronek to go on a parade. I just don't get it. We're, we've we don't been, have we've been set. Parade. We've been sending a piece of apparatus to that parade. I can remember when I was a little boy and my father was a volunteer, and we've been sending a piece of apparatus. All of a sudden, now we're not sending a piece. I requested it last year. We asked for it. We got it the year before and the year before that, and many years before that. And all of a sudden, now we're getting denied on it. How about the refurbished engine? The, 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 the. Commissioner, Commissioner Roach, I don't care what piece of engine you send. We're just asking for a little simple little thing to come to the parade. I mean, we're not asking for the world. No, no, we we're, we're only ask for that once a year. Now, if the board wants to vote on it, we could vote on it. If the board doesn't want to do it, that's another thing. Well, Commissioner Lori, uh, did you? I was told that we had a 1927 American it's, Lafrance. It's being refurbished. It's oh, it's not ready line. to go yet. It's not ready to go oh, yet. Okay. hundred grand. <coughs> okay. I can uh, segue into my comments. Is there I don't a, know go ahead. Say your comments. Is there an, an engine that's out of service right now, like a spare engine or anything like We that? do have a spare engine. Engine 28, the, uh, as we call it, the Green Monster, is a reserve app engine. Uh, we have a reserve ladder truck as well. 
Um, in the past, traditionally, they would send, I believe, one firefighter uh, with a, you know, one of the more modern pieces of apparatus, and then the, uh, the second firefighter that would normally be on that apparatus would stay in town, so we wouldn't lose two firefighters, we would just lose a single firefighter for the three or four hours of the duration of the parade. Uh, they could also be recalled, you know, if there was a fire in town, they could be recalled back from the parade. How does that piece of apparatus back up if it has to back up with one firefighter? There's plenty of men to be his yeah, spotter. That's... I will be his personal spotter if he needs a spotter to back up. Okay? Right. We also brought back a, a, a number one trophy for the last year when we went there with the Bronxville engine. We got the most best, best engine there and we brought back a, a, a first-class trophy. I mean, we do have apparatus go out of town. Uh, we've been sending rigs to the training academy. The other day, right, the Friday, the tower ladder was at the training academy. Commissioner Winters is doing this, Chief, because it's the volunteers. That's all he's they're doing it for. You're sending somebody up to the fire academy okay. to train our fire officers sure. for a legitimate purpose for the taxpayers in this town. Okay. We have a legacy volunteer fire company where we've sent a FOIL request to yeah. months and who, ago. And, and who, who, who ordered that? Because I didn't order it. Let's see the minutes on that and how that vote went, OK? So um, All right, well, hold on. Let's, just, let's, at let's, some point in time, now, we, we're talking about yeah, a fire yeah, apparatus, need, and you're going to, to something to else. Okay. We're talking about a fire apparatus, Commissioner Inkleden, and he's jumping to All something right. else. So let's, he's let's, only, he's let's, only doing this because it's a volunteer thing. He doesn't want to vote on it, fine. He could vote yes, no. He could vote abstain right. if he wants. So, uh, I'm, Let's I'm, take a I'm, vote I'm on it. I'm comfortable with, with the apparatus going out. We've done it historically. I think it's important to you second. know support. So, all right. And we'll uh, poll the board. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Laurie. Aye. I am an aye. Volunteer stuff. Um, no. Okay. Thank you. Have to be a no too. I thought okay. Mr. Laurie abstained from volunteer stuff. Let me no, I'm not abstaining from that. I'm a volunteer. I, could have, I don't have to abstain from a right. vote. Who are you, Dennis, Dennis, what are you that, talking that, about? That, I think, is, is <coughs> you know, this is this is why we get into issues here and debates on the board. Because he hates his, volunteers, his, and the volunteers his put him voting, there, and he does it all the time. And you never parade. stop breaking stones on me, Dennis. You've been breaking stones on me since the day I got on this board, and I'm glad the public sees it. You and your other two past commissioners have rejected me on this board, have criticized me. I'm, you're lucky that I didn't sue you three for slander of character. None of the three of you knew my background and you put it in the paper. I had no college, I had no business background, and you wrote that in the paper, and you, Napolitano and Baker, signed it. And you, the three of you, I should have sued you for slander because none of you know my background, none of you didn't even know where I come from. And I don't know where you come from, and I didn't, would never do that. No, Peter, I'm not going to keep quiet because this man has been doing this for the last three years. He, he hated me to come on this board. It, 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 it literally blew his goat because I got elected. I didn't get elected from him. I got elected from the townspeople here. And for the last three years, he's been bugging me that he didn't want me here. I was a gentleman. I congratulated everybody that was here. This man even stepped on my feet in the, town, in the, in the headquarters because he didn't even want me here. Okay. Yes, you did, Dennis. And, and don't tell the people that's the farthest from the truth because that is the truth. Okay. You are a miserable person. Okay. I, uh, I just want to say that like uh, this, Commissioner Lori is, is clearly uh, a little emotional right now. I think it's important that, that people know, and I'm going to say this because I think it's important, that there is a lot of things that have gone on uh, behind the scenes on this board, and a lot of personal, vicious personal attacks that aren't made in public for everyone to hear, but are done in email, behind the scenes. And I think what happens when that is done uh, by certain board members and they pursue a personal agenda, it, it creates an acrimony that sometimes boils over. And it's happened with me. It's happened basically with, with most members of this current, current board. And I think, you know, I, I just want to say that I, I, I don't condone that any one of us, including myself, ever has an outburst. We need to try to control that. But what I am saying is that there is more going on here than, 
than everybody sees on the television cameras. And I think that, you know, we need to conduct ourselves as professionals uh, up here, but privately as well. And yeah, I, yeah. I direct Mr. that Lori to Commissioner Winter. Like and I just said, I don't. I, I don't, beg your pardon? You conducted yourself like a professional, and I take exception to your comments. Too All bad. I objected to is a volunteer, a, a paid piece of apparatus going to a parade when we haven't had a fire, volunteer fireman respond to a call in 10 years. We've also, in case you've been watching the newspaper, um, the fire department has been see, proceeding to find out how much money is in the East Chester Benevolent Association and the again. East Chester Volunteer Officers Association, how they spend it. Since 2012, approximately $445,000 has been gone from the Benevolent Association, has been given to various East Chester Fire companies, including the Bronxville Hose Company, North End Hose Company, Rescue Hook and Ladder, Tuckahoe Hose Company, Union Corners Engine Company. One example, just one example, in 2014, $135,000 was given from the benevolent. 2014, the fire department, the volunteers hadn't responded to a call in seven years. They got $135,000 that year. So the fire district is diligently trying to find out what happened to all this money. We filed an Article 78 many years ago. It's in front of Judge um, Blackwood, who's been going through the motions and we've actually filed a contempt of court motion. And last month, Mr. Horn testified at that um, contempt of court motion. The news reporter was there and picked up the story. The volunteers prior to that had pleaded the fifth um, on certain questions that we asked of them. So the judge obviously got a concern when a volunteer fire company pleads the fifth um, or their benevolent pleads the fifth. And so, yes, this has caused a little acrimony. Um, and right now, the board has foiled for each of these volunteer fire companies for the bank records that we want the checks that the volunteer companies have used. You know, what they're just copies of their checking account for the last five years of what they did. Now, all the money under oath by Mr. Horn is given to these volunteer fire companies for recruitment and retention. So think of that. Since 2012, $445,000 mostly going for recruitment and retention to companies that have not responded to a call in years. So yes, people may not like my approach that I ask direct questions and I don't accept non-answers. Sorry, that's me. Um, but I think it's fair to ask questions like, what is the Waverly Engine Company doing with $26,000 they got in 2014? What is the Tuckahoe Hose Company doing with $5,250 they got in 2015? What, who cashed the check in the Bronxville Engine Company uh, for $1,000, $1,050 on May 21st, 2015? Because my understanding, the Bronxville Engine Company number three does not exist. Well, they, they said it. They said at Memorial Day that you represent that company. The, la the, 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 the lady said the lady said it right on the, the microphone in front of Bronxville High School. Commissioner Winters represents the Bronxville Engine Company. Let me let me go on. Go ahead. So somebody cashed a check for the Bronxville Ho Engine Company in 2015. Who cashed it? Who it? You, you know? represent that company. You tell us. I, who rest is according it said, She said it right on the microphone in the public no. on the Memorial Day. She certainly did. Lori, stop. No, I'm not stopping. She says you, Commissioner Winters represents the Bronxville Engine Company. No, please. No, no, no. She said it right on the thing. Get the tape out and you could see it. This is transit. This is Mr. Oh, okay. Horn's. This is Mr. Horn's under deposition comments. Dennis, okay. Getting, no, we're, we're not getting off the track. I will give. I will give the answer. That's him. I will give you the answer. Okay. I would like to make a motion. To okay. Uh, I am the treasurer of the Tuckahoe. Okay. Waverly Engine Company. This is one company. I am the treasurer. So Mr. Horn saying he's the treasurer of the Waverly Engine Company. Tuckahoe Hose Company. Anthony Laurie. Rescue Hook and Ladder. John C O Z Z A. Union Horn, 
Union Quarters Engine Company, I believe, is Tommy Vichy. Uh, Vichy. North End Hook and Ladder, Raymond Albanese. Bronxville Engine and Hose, Jeffrey Pate. That's wrong Pate. right there, I tell you that. Well, this is the testimony under oath of Mr. Horn. So it may be wrong, take it up with Mr. Horn. He gave this under oath as testimony in front of the judge last month. So you gentlemen can do what you choose, how you choose, but I think we need to get the checks from these volunteer and fire companies who haven't responded for a call in 10 years and find out where the 400 odd thousand dollars went. And okay. if that's unreasonable, I'm being unreasonable. Commissioner Winters, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Sure. You said the volunteers have, have, have received the order to stand down. Let's see the, this, the minutes of that meeting, that who approved that, and how many voted on that? Ask your chairman, he will tell you. He wasn't here in 2006. Oh, talking about 2006? Yeah, who, who, who gave the order to stand down? The chief gave the order to stand down. By whose approval? The chief gave the order. By whose approval? The chief gave the order. Take it up with the chief. All right. Dennis, the board, the, the board has to approve everything, don't they? No. Okay, Dennis, you're right. Okay. So. Okay, let's move on, Commissioner. Here, here uh, just. <laughs> I, I don't think that the acrimony is a result of Dennis's pursuit of the volunteers. I don't, because I'm not a volunteer. That's not my fight. But there has been, I have personally witnessed, like I said, somewhat vicious personal attacks on people's, on people's, what, their salaries relative to Dennis's, their level of education relative to Dennis's, the losses on their holiday homes in upstate New York. Dennis <laughs> launches personal Peter. vicious attacks. Yeah, come on. And that's 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 what's going on here. And I I personally have supported uh, the case ag against the volunteers that we're in now. Simply stated, we submitted a lawful foil, they didn't respond, and we pursued it. And we're entitled to that information. I do differ from Dennis, though, on this in that I want to collect all the information, get all what we're looking for, and then make an assessment. I don't want to jump to conclusions before we have complete information. I'm frustrated that the volunteers haven't turned over what we've asked for. I'm very frustrated by that. But at the same time, you know, this is not my crusade at this point to put someone in jail. I don't think it's, it's what... You know, I don't think it's what the board's function is. I think we want to get the information, and then if there is something there, turn it over to the proper authorities. This is, is become uh, something far more, and out of, in my opinion, the purview of what a member of this board should be doing uh, for Commissioner Winter. So going in and coming to these public meetings and detailing this specific check and that specific pet check and what was that was used for and what was this was used for, at this point, he's speculating. We want to get the information. He may be right. He, ultimately, he may be right. But I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't think we want to you know, accuse people, try and convict them here at this meeting. This is not what this board should be doing. And so you know, that's, that's my piece with that. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Well, I just wanted to, just not on this subject, just because I didn't get a chance to. Add. Um, Chief, were you still interested in getting this ID card I, uh, machinery? Is that something that you Lisa need now? Lisa went to uh, the police department's. What I, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, Lisa, Lisa yeah. said that the police department has a new one that they would let us borrow. Uh, okay. I, you know, personally, I think we should go okay. that route. Great. And the only other thing I would say is that um, I've been collecting some information. I had a conversation with Lisa and Jamie this week, uh, not with the chief, but I think that it, in the idea of continuity for our office and our needs for administratively, I think that we should begin to take a look at maybe bringing in a new copier that could double as a very large printer for their needs. Um, I got a couple of companies i think we can maybe have you guys look at a couple of companies too and figure out what will help that office especially for our firefighters and but more so for our administrative office and maybe the copier that's in the hallway potentially be used 
for non-office stuff, but stuff for you know training and whatever, and and look into that just to allow them better scanning opportunities for larger documents and stuff like that, just for the future. Yeah, I think to me, I'd spend the sixteen hundred bucks buy this buy the ID machine and move on with it. We've been talking about it for two months. Just buy the machine and move on because. The police department, I think, graciously offered that we could go over to the Eastchester Police Department and use their equipment. But if you think about it, they have manpower they're paying time for, and, and it just doesn't seem like a good use of their time to be having their personnel just because they're going to ask more questions. We know the answer's right in front of us. All right. I thought so they, they were going to visit next month. Borrow it. Yeah. We'll you want to just visit it next month. We have the proposal here. Yeah, but it's not like we're, used, we're just we going to go over and get the we machine. we have it right here. We can just go yeah. We've literally talked about this for three months. Sorry, Lisa. So they have an actual machine. All you need to do is take a picture with a digital camera. So I can literally take 75 pictures, send it to them via email, and they can print it and it's done. I mean, it sounds pretty simple. We just have to print it. Yeah. Listen, my, my, my case again, and if the board wants to vote to approve it, that's fine. But like, $1,600 is not a major expense, but it's something that we're going to do once and then do again in three years. East Chester has a brand new machine. I say we use it three years from now, we buy a brand new machine and we let them borrow it. And then we'll have state-of-the-art technology today and we'll have it three years from now. So that's, that's what I propose. So, you know, like East Chester three years from now, your police IDs are going to be really nice. So. I think you're right. We shouldn't buy it. We should send volunteers over to Mamaroneck instead. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Call the board. Oh, sorry. Two comments. One is, if we were, if I responded five times today, would you know about it? Five times how? How would you know if I responded or I didn't respond? How would you know if Anthony Fiore responded? How would you know if we go to a call? What do you have in place to track whether we go to a call or not? Well, right now we know you don't, so there's no question. Why don't you? It's your responsibility to have something like that in place. We're basically free employees of the town. If I go to a call at 2 o'clock in the morning, how do you know if I'm there or I'm not there? Wait a second. If you would have how do you know? We are so far away from that happening as far as training, <coughs> all that stuff. Oh, well, that's because my battery has been dead and I've asked the chief for a new one and hopefully when it does come in, I'll get it and my pager will work. You still need training. But how do you, I'm talking beside that. If I walked up to a call now, today, how would you know if I ever showed up? I would hear it on the radio probably. Well, I don't have a radio. Okay. I have a pager, when it works, it tells me the location and that's where I go. After that, how do you know if I was there or not? It's not for me to know. It's for the chief to know. Why would I? No, it's up to you to know. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You see an attendance record for other, the career firefighters when they come on duty, yes. when they're out sick? Yes. How do you know what I do or what I don't do? You have no record of tracking me. I'm losing. This conversation is losing. We used, to have, we used to have run slips. You went on an alarm. You went back to the firehouse. You filled out a slip. With carbon paper. That's 40 years. What is in place now to track what we do and what we don't do? You have nothing in place. Well, they, okay, okay, okay. I don't want to get into a real giant long conversation about the I'm, volunteers. I'm not getting into a long. I'm asking you a merit. question. You're yeah. sitting here saying that we don't respond. You don't even know if we respond. Oh, well, we know. Here's the deal. No, you don't know. You have no, there's over no the record years, of us coming to a call. Fishy, over the years, do you have, a, do you have something that tracks what we do or what we don't do? Yes or no? It's that simple. Well, we know what you do right now. Do you have a record of us tracking us whether we show up or we don't show up? Yes or no? Flip a coin. I'll even accept that. Flip a coin. Mr. Fishy, if you were to, from the fire department you knew five years ago or ten years ago, a fireman today carries a, when, you know, a, a badge or, a, or a, what do you call it, an accountability tag. And so if he shows up at a fire scene, 
We have accountability tags. Memberships, when they come, members, when they come to work, we know who doesn't come to work. We get an email who doesn't come to work. I, I think this is kind of a strange conversation. No, it's really not because you, we had run slips with carbon paper. One went to, stayed at the firehouse, one went with the captain on his tour, they'd pick him up. They'd go to headquarters, it got tallied, and you knew how many calls every one of us made. You don't have that in place anymore. So why? You have nothing to track anything that we do. That's because you haven't been in, in you haven't been in. No, 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 no. Even if we show up, I'm saying you have nothing in place to track whether we show up or we don't show up. You're represented by the VOA, right? The Volunteer Office Association. Why don't you read the court papers the Volunteer Office Association See, you're mixing has. apples and oranges. The Volunteer Officers Association has Why don't you tell the people that I've stood up at this meeting on four occasions and you opted not to sit down with us? This could have been absolutely. You're asking a question. Well, let me answer. I'm asking you, can you track us? No, you can't. I'm telling you now that we asked four times for you to sit down and we would have showed you everything you needed to know. But you said no, you wanted to go to 78. So now it's in the courts. Now, let me explain. If you should read your own article 7, just stop, stop. Now, let me just finish. Read your own article 78 where you argue you're a social organization. Actually, I, I'm...